So starting out, this happened about a year and a half ago, okay? I was in the state of Ohio. I don't know if you guys have ever been to the Midwest. I apologize in advance if anyone's from the Midwest, okay? I'm from South, sorry. I'm from South Jersey. I'm from the Philadelphia area. There's a lot of nice places in the Midwest. Ohio is all right, but it's not incredibly amazing. I don't know. But in any case, I was there for a little, a little over a year until about a few months ago. And I was in the Akron area, okay? I don't know if you've ever been to Akron, okay? It's, it's all right. It's, it's, you know, it's basically like a Lego play set of a city. It's very it's kind of sterile, kind of aseptic. It's like a Lego play set. So it's not exactly everything is awesome. It's kind of like everything is so-so, kind of, more or less. Okay, so here's what happened. I was actually in a suburb that was even more so-so called Cuyahoga Falls. Okay, not quite as exotic as it, as it sounds. What happened to me was this. I was starting out there, and I was a little bit anxious, a little bit nervous. It was a totally alien territory to me, Ohio, like a world next door, sort of, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And I was just starting there. And there's a lot of intriguing places in Cuyahoga Falls, despite its relative plainness at first. There was a gym there. There was some churches there that were okay, kind of picturesque. I was very drawn to a certain shopping mall there. I'm not the biggest gore hound, but I'm a fan of some George Romero films, if anyone out there is. In any case, it kind of reminded me of the mall from Dawn of the Dead. We're not talking about exciting Ving Rhames armored cars chainsaw remake Dawn of the Dead. We're talking about the original, okay? If you guys have ever seen it from the 70s, they play you know, the Muzak, the mall Muzak, the gong that was appropriated by Robot Chicken a few years ago. Dun 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 dun. That Dawn of the Dead. And I was fully convinced that this must have been the mall. I think Wikipedia was lying to me because I think that this was actually the mall. They claim that it's in Monroeville, Pennsylvania or some such, but I think it was in Ohio. I wanted to set out to this mall and prove myself correct. So here's what happened. You know, the, the, the weather we had tonight kind of sets the scene for this. I don't know if you ever heard of the lake effect if you've been out there. In the Great Lakes states, there's like, I, don't, I can't get all up into the Bill Nye science guy of this, but wind comes off the lakes and it makes for like heavier precipitation or something like that. There was a lot of snow at this time, much more than we've seen here in this area. Okay, and it was covering everything basically. And I was driving towards this mall to set the scene a little bit more, to set the table, so to speak. I, um, you know, if, if you ever like started driving when you were younger and you were like a young whippersnapper driving and you were told, you know, watch out in parking lots because people don't drive in straight lines. A lot of dangers in parking lots, okay? There's some other dangers of parking lots I found out the hard way. There can be environmental hazards, both naturally and synthetic, that can kind of tend to combine to screw you over. That's what happened to me. I was driving towards this Gonk original mall, walking, sorry, Walking Dead, Dawn of the Dead mall, and I'm going towards a certain snow, what looks like a little clump of snow, and I'm driving towards in this like, big, powerful SUV I had my folks gave me for Ohio exploits. And I'm going over this small snow patch, and all of a sudden I stop. It's like, Rrr. I can't move forward, I can't move backward. I jump out of the car to see what's going on, and all of a sudden I'm straddled over a, what would they call it, a sidewalk berm, kind of like a divider. I have two wheels over the front, over the curb, two wheels over the back. I'm totally trapped. I'm going to segue a little bit from horror, because this really was a horror experience consistent with Romero in a sense, except instead of being zombies, it was more like concrete or whatever the sidewalk was made of. I let out this kind of scream. A couple stories ago I did, I mentioned Katniss Everdeen from Hunger Games. It wasn't a Katniss scream. It wasn't even a PETA, like her weak saw significant other kind of scream. This was the freaking Mockingjay itself. I was like, no! Kind of like very, very high pitched at the prospect of losing this car because I imagine once it was going to be towed out, it would completely rip apart. And I said to myself, you know, I'm just starting out here. I can't believe what a noob I am to fall into such an environmental hazard trap. I must be the only person in the entire 100 mile radius to fall for this. Not 10 minutes later, I kid you not, a sedan comes up, tries to go over the snow, and gets stuck as well. Okay? <laughs> All of a sudden, I'm feeling a little bit less victimization here and despair. It goes from the tone goes a little bit from horror to like science fiction, kind of almost like the day after the day after tomorrow with all this snow. And I'm thinking to myself, you know, maybe I'm, you know, I'm not the only person who's like this. Maybe I can help someone else out and be a hero more than just a victim. And the girl I see in her car, she's banging her fist against the wheel and she's despairing. And I go on over, and I'm thinking, well, she's kind of cute. Maybe she can be the leading lady in my story. She can be like the Bryce Dallas Howard to my um, Chris Pratt. I just saw Jurassic Park or whatever it's called. Anyway. But then I find out that she's talking on the phone, and she's talking to her husband. And she has like five kids at home, so so much for that subplot. But anyway, I find out from her 
that she, it turns out that she's of, of, of more humble economic origins, should I say. She doesn't have AAA like I do, and she doesn't have car insurance. So she's very, very despondent. So all of a sudden, I realize, even though I'm starting out here, I feel like I'm out of place. I feel like I don't belong. I feel like a horror victim. All of a sudden, I feel like I do have a certain place here in this one context. I call AAA for, I say, you know, help's coming on the way. She's very grateful. And if I can just add two, you know, other people started coming who were stuck just an hour and a half previous. There was like an old kindly Jewish couple who came. They had thought they lost their cell phone in the snow and they were being dragged out. They were being towed out. And it turned out that it was actually on their car floor the entire time, their cell phone. But, you know, all of a sudden it was like, you know, I feel like, like the only possible moron that could do this. And I was part of an entire community of these people to whom it could happen. So I felt like I totally belonged. The whole moral of the story, if you're starting out, you know, you can feel like you're out of place. But if you, you stick around long enough and you, you tough it out and you go through certain experiences, you find you belong pretty well, whether you're a hero or a victim or otherwise. Thank you.